All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our BCBA fifth edition task list series with D experimental design. Today we're starting experimental design, probably the least favorite section of really many people preparing to take this exam, just because we don't think about experimental design a lot in practice, but you've got to know the ins and outs. And we're going to start with a very important idea, which is dependent and independent variables. Now, if this concept is new to you, it might take a while to internalize it, but once you do, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So as always, we're going to break it down as simply as possible. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials, including combo packs and our practice exams. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. All right, so distinguishing between dependent and independent variables. And what's the point here? The point here is we're seeking experimental control. We want control over that dependent variable. So experimental control occurs when a predictable change in the behavior, the DV, is produced by systematic manipulation of the environment. Important words here. First, predictable change, meaning we can predict and assume what is going to happen to the behavior. And we predict that as we're manipulating the environment. So we are planning ahead our manipulation, so systematically manipulating the environment. And through those manipulations, we can accurately predict how behavior is going to change. Once we can do that, we now have experimental control over the behavior. And that's our ultimate goal, to be able to control how behavior responds to the environment. So experimentally understanding the effects of manipulation and repeatedly showing those effects is what we consider analysis or analytic. So if you think about one of our dimensions, analytic, we've got that functional relationship, we have experimental control. And you only can say you have experimental control when you repeatedly demonstrate those effects. That's why it's very important that we do these things over and over again. Just because you manipulated behavior once doesn't mean you have control. Once you can reliably and repeatedly show you have control, then you can officially say you have experimental control. So when you can exercise control over behavior, time and time again, you have experimental control. That's one of the keys, repeatedly. So that's where we're going to start. Now, let's talk about independent variables. Start there, right? So remember, you're manipulating the independent variable in an effort to affect the dependent variable. So whatever you're introducing, whatever you're changing, whatever you're taking away, that's your independent variable. The dependent variable is going to be your behavior. For example, if I'm using extinction, that would be my independent variable. On screaming, that's my dependent variable. So the IV of the independent variable is the environmental variable manipulated, changed, introduced, or removed. What are you changing? What are you adding? What's your intervention? What stimulus are you taking away? What are you contributing to the environment? These are all your independent variables. Now, you can have more than one independent variable, right? Typically, you're going to want to examine one at a time. Now, if we use something like an alternating treatment design, then we're going to be rapidly going between them. But for the most part, in order to maintain integrity, you really want to manipulate one IV at a time so you can really measure the effect of the IV on the DV, but we'll get into that a little later. So for example, you introduce a reinforcement procedure. This is what you're changing or introducing or manipulating, making it your IV. And then you measure the impact on answering questions, your DV. So answering questions is impacted by the reinforcement procedure. Might go up, might go down, might not change, but answering questions is dependent on the reinforcement procedure or how much salt makes your dish that you're cooking taste best according to a room of people. So these people's opinions, right? How it tastes, how they think it tastes, is affected by how much salt you take away or add in your dish. Bottom line, you are controlling that independent variable. The DV is being affected by what you're controlling. So if we talk about the DV, remember, we're systematically controlling the IV to affect the DV. Well, then the DV is the behavior of variable that changes contingent 
on factors like the IV. And what do we what do why do we say contingent on factors like the IV? Well, we're going to talk next video about things like confounds and extraneous variables. Everything going on in the environment has a chance to impact our dependent variable. It's our job to control for those things. What we want in order to establish true experimental control is we we must ensure that it is actually our independent variable changing the DV. If a different variable that we're not controlling affects the 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 DV, well, we don't have experimental control. We're going to talk about that next video. So remember, you want your IV to affect the DV and the IV only. So for example, answering questions, the DV changes depending on the variable that is introduced or that impacts the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is how it changes is dependent on everything else in the environment, all these other variables and stimuli in the environment, or the soup that everyone tasted and rated, the dependent variable, following different amounts of salt, right? So the ratings might have changed based on the salt. And we want to be sure that it was only the salt content. Let's say the soup that you made, you put salt in, but without you knowing it, your sous chef came behind you and also added carrots. Now, what if it was the carrots that changed the rating? Well, that would be a confound because you weren't controlling that. And we're going to talk about that again next video. For now, focused on the, on the basics. What's an IV? What's a DV? Remember, you control the IV in an attempt to manipulate and affect the DV. And once your independent variable affects the dependent variable and you can predict behavior change over and over again, we have experimental control. Watch this video over and over again until you can internalize IVDV, IVDV. It's going to be very important moving forward for experimental design. This is those foundation skills. You have to have the foundation skills. Watch it over and over again, internalize it. It's going to make the subsequent videos that much easier. As always, check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including combo packs and practice exams. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. That way you get all of our video updates. Every video we post will get into your feed, so please sure to do that. As always, work hard, study hard. See you soon.